Sunday morning. I've got my coffee and I'm sat down here just by the stream where the, where the stream comes away from the spring well in the fairy wood and it gushes over those stones, begins to go down through the silt pond following the route that it's carved out for itself. It's amazing how water manoeuvres its way through the landscape in perfect harmony with the landscape. And more often than not, we as humans want to control it and straighten, straighten the water line and divert it and But the natural flow, the natural path, the contours that it creates, the way it flows through the land, is an amazing feat of engineering that we have nothing to do with. The water does all that. So is water intelligent? Well, of course it is. All the elements on this earth and above this earth and around this earth and the earth itself is intelligent. We find that very difficult to conceive of because, because of our arrogance, our waywardness. The earth knows what she's doing. And so I've been sat here with my coffee in the early morning light, listening to the water, watching the flow, admiring the curves the wind just very gently coming through what's left of the leaves on the trees. There's magic in the air. Real magic in the air. We're on the descent now. The descent down towards Samhain. When we have this notion that the landscape goes to sleep. Of course it's not about sleep. We, as, we associate sleep with darkness and heading off into the dark time of the year we call it sleep. It's not. Within the darkness is the most amazing life. Probably more life in the dark than what there is in the light. Just that we don't see it. Now I'm up and walking, walking along the path in the lower woodland. I spoke a few days ago, might have been a week ago, on my last video about the way the woodland has divided itself up into three quite different sections and how the energy in each is quite different. And of course, this is very much to do with the contours of the land because 
within all those contours are microclimates and differing kinds of energy and certain trees grow in certain areas. So you have all these differences being worked in. And most of the time we're just not aware of it. We walk the landscape and we don't open ourselves up to it. I'm walking amongst leaves and fungi, so many different kinds of little mushrooms, and this wonderful, wonderful light that seems to just make everything shimmer on the woodland floor. I had a heap of bread on the kitchen table this morning and I put it out for the bigger birds. I threw it in big clumps out on the top of the driveway by the gable wall. And some beautiful magpies come down. At one point I counted five of them and then six. And then they were followed by reluctant crows. The crows are a little bit more reluctant to swoop down. I think the magpies are just more aerodynamic. They seem to have a way of swooping down on the ground with so much ease. Then they're not so big. The crows are massive. They have body weight and wingspan to contend with. And of course, it's the morning, but not terribly early in the morning. So the bird song is rather muted. They're busy feeding and flitting about. At this time of the year, to hear the birds, you should be up very early in the morning. Just before and after dawn. Well, I suppose that's not very early now. It's getting later and later. And in the evening, as the birds settle down, I think that's when they're noisiest. in late October. It's interesting because I'm stood just near the pond in the lower woodland and for the first time in years I can see the colour of the cottage walls through the trees. As the trees grow bigger the landscape opens up more. Every so often when I stop like this and I look up, there's a, a little clear patch of sky. And especially when you stand 
underneath the birch trees because of course they, they lose their leaves very quickly. So you can see so much looking up through them. really feel this descent happening in real time. Beautiful. <laughs>